What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. So, Suicide Squad uh, going sane is probably the best thing coming out of DC Rebirth right now. And the reason why is because this gives us a story where Harley Quinn goes back to being a sane human being, like she goes back to being normal. And it's actually kind of cool because we don't really see this that often because Harley Quinn's character with regards to her being bonkers and being bananas is one of those things where it works uh, really, really well depending on who's writing the story and what context she's in. Like if Harley Quinn were hanging out with the Justice League, it'd be hilarious to see her just babbling nonsense and just being crazy. But when she's hanging out with a suicide squad, then it's kind of run for, you know, it's kind of par for the course. And so again, it's sort of an interesting scenario. But what this does is it comes as a direct follow-up to the last video that we did. Now, if you missed that last video, all that really did was give us this idea that the suicide squad, which is basically this group run by Amanda Waller, they were basically sent on a mission to locate something called the Black Vault. Now, once they actually accessed it, they ran into a character named Hack, who basically had the ability to take physical objects and turn them into digital information and teleport them over any length, but once they encountered this Black Vault, they basically discovered that the Black Vault contained General Zod. Now, General Zod, of course, is one of Superman's most notable enemies, but the issue that we had with that is we didn't really know how it was that he ended up there. It was just he was stuck there one day. But this follows up to directly after it is that the Black Vault is sent directly back to uh, back to, to Bell Reef Prison, where the Suicide Squad operate out of. Now, one of the people who were killed in the last story arc, or at least the only person who was killed in the last story arc, was Captain Boomerang. And of course, with the Suicide Squad, somebody always dies. I mean, that's just normal. Somebody always ends up getting killed off. It's really just a hallmark of the story at this point. But what ends up happening here is that once the Black Vault is brought back to Belle Reve, everybody starts experiencing these insane phenomena where their personalities basically reverse. And so it's very similar to Marvel's Axis, just not on nearly as much of a grandiose scale and not nearly as poorly written. But it is an interesting story in so far that this basically gives us a lot of the characters and inverts their personalities. And so for the most part, each individual that's highlighted in this story is designed to be shown in a way that they basically face their own demons and they struggle with their own issues. Now, somebody else that I want to point out here is a character by the name of Harcourt. Now, Amelia Harcourt is a liaison between the NSA and the Suicide Squad. And that's one of the things that I want to focus on here for a second, because contrary to what you might think, the Suicide Squad is not allowed to do whatever it is that they want to do. Given the authority that Amanda Waller has and how abrasive her personality is, she can really kind of inject herself into any situation and she's really given a lot of leeway. But the other half of this is that with the Suicide Squad acting as this group that's supposed to be a black ops group and supposed to engage in missions where nobody can trace it back to the US government, there has to be somebody monitoring what it is the Suicide Squad does. And so with regards to Amanda Waller and the Amelia Harcourt relationship, Amanda Waller is effectively a subordinate. She's given a lot of leeway in terms of what she does with the Suicide Squad, but Amelia Harcourt's there to make sure that if Amanda Waller goes too far off the reservation, that she'll be removed from her position and replaced with somebody else. And so again, what ends up happening here is that by some unknown means, at least it's not explicitly explained on the surface, everybody begins to effectively lose their minds. Now, it's not just a sudden switch. I mean, it is to a degree, but the way that it's done begins to make sense. And the reason why is because it starts with something small. It starts with the character of Hack, who again, can basically transfer physical objects by, by way of a digital stream. And so the result is that she initially starts seeing all these different hallucinations and all these different images. And of course, words like the people come together, you know, bring the people back, you know, the world has to come back, all that kind of good stuff, just these weird little messages and so on. But the real way in which this is transitioned it comes by way of Rick Flagg. And the reason why is because of the fact that General Zod is a very powerful person. He's basically Superman with a couple things that make him a little bit stronger, but also a couple things that make him a little bit weaker. And so because of that, if the Suicide Squad were able to basically take hold of General Zod and use him for their own ends, they would effectively have their own version of Superman, which presents an interesting scenario for the team itself, just because of the fact that there's a lot more that they could get done. Remember, when it comes to the Suicide Squad, on the whole, with the exception of like Enchantress or El Diablo, there's really no one here that has like any kind of insane enhanced abilities. I mean, Killer Croc does to a degree, but it's really more like durability and super strength more so than anything else. But with regards to having General Zod on their side, it means that they could literally send him in as a one man army, have him just absolutely wreck whoever it is that they're supposed to be going against and then recall him. It would almost make the rest of the Suicide Squad obsolete. Now, the other half of this is that where Amanda Waller views her duties as being someone that's basically designed to protect the world, Rick Flagg views himself as more of a patriot than anything else. And so in his 
mind. While General Zod would be a pretty solid ally for the Suicide Squad themselves, at the end of the day, his argument is that the Suicide Squad is designed to serve the benefit of the US, not the benefit of the world. And if there were a being who was rolled over to the Suicide Squad, who would be a danger to society as a whole, that being has to be removed. In this case, General Zod. Now, for the most part, Rick Flagg wouldn't really step into the role of like publicly defying Amanda Waller. And there's a couple reasons for this. The first is because of the fact that with Amanda Waller, she'd just kill him on the spot, no questions asked, if for no other reason than to just make an example of him. But the other half of that is because Rick Flagg, despite the fact he doesn't really like Amanda Waller too much, also shares a kind of uh, respect to a degree for what it is that she's trying to achieve. And so again, that's one of the reasons why he's sort of part of this team as part of the Suicide Squad. And I, I don't mean to say that there's friendship. They're never going to go out and share a drink together. I mean, he doesn't really like her, but you don't have to like someone to respect someone. And so that's one of the interesting things about this particular scenario. Now, the other half of this is that with everything beginning to go awry, with people's personalities beginning to switch and, you know, good guys becoming bad guys, so on and so forth, what ends up happening here is Katana actually turns against the entirety of the Suicide Squad. Now, this is a pretty big deal because remember, despite Katana not having really special abilities unto herself, aside from all of her martial arts training and sword fighting and so on and so forth, and the various souls that are trapped within that sword, she's still a force to be reckoned with. The other half of this is that with General Zod effectively waking up, this comes by way of the fact that with the various, you know, governmental groups realizing that Superman's biggest weakness is red sun radiation, which will effectively depower him. It'll just kind of reduce the solar radiation in his body and then basically make him a normal person. General Zod is bombarded with the same thing in order to keep him in stasis while they experiment on him and work on him and see if they can try to make him a member of the Suicide Squad. But with the red solar lights malfunctioning due to somebody screwing with him and emitting solar rays, well, this basically just begins a process of waking him up. But the cool thing about this is that Harley Quinn also flips as well. She basically becomes a sane human being. And that's what makes the story so interesting is not necessarily because of the fact that Harley Quinn is sane, but because of what she can achieve as a sane person. Remember, Harley Quinn is not just some girl who was just really enamored with the Joker and then just fell in with a bad crowd and then became the Joker's sidekick for a little while and the two of them did whatever it is that they do. Harley Quinn is extremely intelligent given her experience in, you know, psychotherapy and, you know, her various forms of education and so on and so forth. She is a brilliant individual. And so her ability to basically look at everybody's individual actions, how they are now versus how they were before, draw her to one basic and almost infallible conclusion that the Black Vault or whatever it is that's going on here has inverted people's personalities, but only in so far that it's basically reduced them down to their base instincts. And so that's why it is that Katana is ripping everybody to shreds because her base instinct is to just destroy everything she comes across to kill everybody that she can. Now, of course, the other half of this is Harley Quinn, you know, overpowering who she can, where she can, but this also hits on the nature of Amanda Waller. One of the reasons why DC fans love Amanda Waller so much is because she is hardcore. I mean, it is <laughs> it's absolutely nuts how intense her character is. And she's like that in several different ways. I mean, we as readers who go through and read her stories, we know she's not someone to be messed with. And we know that if we read like a Batman story, for example, and Amanda Waller shows up, that despite Bruce Wayne being Batman, despite his resources, despite his vast capabilities, even he knows to give Amanda Waller a pretty wide berth because if she has her mind set on something, she will move heaven and earth in order to make it happen. And so if she set her sights on Batman and wanted to eliminate him in his entirety, she would, she would go to almost unlimited means to make that happen. Batman would have to end run around her, either bring in the rest of the Justice League or else go to the US government or something along those lines to reel Amanda Waller in. He wouldn't be able to bargain with her. He wouldn't be able to reason with her, anything along those lines. But the other thing that this shows us is that it's not a matter of her just being cutthroat and being cold blooded and that kind of a thing. She's got to resolve like nothing anyone's ever seen. Because while everybody else in Belle Reve is losing their minds and they're falling to their base instincts and they're kind of going awry, Amanda Waller is keeping it together the best she can. Now, the other half of this is also Rick Flagg himself. And Rick Flagg's able to do this to a degree, but he does it by basically just stabbing himself in the leg. And what this does is it's the equivalent of, you know, breaking your finger in order to distract the pain from something else. Focusing on the pain in his leg allows his mind to concentrate on one particular thing, as opposed to letting it go awry because of this virus is impacting everybody. But switching back over to uh, to Hack, what we end up finding out is that this virus that's going around and impacting everyone, that's basically influencing the Black Vault and kind of driving everybody to go insane, is ultimately Captain Boomerang himself, in the sense that he's kind of emitting as a, as a digital aspect, influencing the various minds of people through the Black Vault and so on and so forth. It's kind of weird. I'm not even 100% sure that even I understand it fully, but basically it means that, you know, Captain Boomerang is effectively impacting these various individuals by switching their minds and forcing them back to their base instincts. Now, it's not something that he's 
doing because he intends to. He's doing it because he just doesn't realize what it is that's happening. Now, of course, at this point, with General Zod waking up, because of the fact that General Zod is so similar to Superman, the only real ace in the hole that the Suicide Squad have is June Moon, the Enchantress, just because of the fact that Kryptonians are basically weak to magic. It's one of the caveats Superman has, and it's one of the ways to basically invoke a defeat on his behalf without using green kryptonite all the time. And so because of this, June Moon basically switches over to Enchantress at the behest of Harley Quinn. And this basically leads to the idea of, you know, Enchantress invoking her various magics and so on and so forth in an effort to try to defeat General Zod. Now, in terms of Captain Boomerang, we get a little more explanation here. And essentially what ended up happening is in the last video, when Captain Boomerang was totally killed off, what ended up taking place is Captain Boomerang was basically teleported as a digital essence, so to speak, alongside the other members of the Suicide Squad when Hack teleported them out. And so what this meant was that Captain Boomerang basically just needed a physical body. He needed to be reconstituted, but his essence, his soul or spirit or what have you, whatever you want to call it, was still out there. Now with him not having a physical body to transform to, when he had arrived back in Bell Reef Prison, he had basically just sort of existed out there in this kind of digital space, so to speak, the best way to explain it really, but was able to, to essentially impact the Black Vault and then use the abilities of the Black Vault to more or less trick everybody else or impact everybody else's mind. But again, it's not because of the fact that he was doing it for nefarious means. It was, he was just trying to find a way back. He was trying to get himself back to his normal human body. Now, of course, following this, it kind of leads to this absolute mass pandemonium in the sense that the guards are losing their minds. The General Zod is trying to attack everybody with Harley Quinn, of course, being as sane as she ever was, realizing that the entire place is going awry and the whole place is flooded with water and electric shock of some measure. While it wouldn't necessarily be enough to kill General Zod, it would definitely be enough to like shock his body or impact him in a way that it would take some form of notice. In turn, what this does is it allows Hack to basically dive in and then almost try to whisk him away or at the very least to more or less knock him unconscious. And that's effectively what happens. I mean, General Zod doesn't get whisked back into the Phantom Zone again because the goal of this story is to actually set the stage for General Zod to become a member of the Suicide Squad. And so that's why this is kind of cool is because what this does is it leads into the possibility that he will be brought in. And of course, with him being brought in and leading into the, to the next couple stories or so, that sets the stage for the whole Action Comics revenge storyline when he's basically trying to find a way to eliminate the Suicide Squad or break away from them or what have you while also trying to face down Superman. But again, it's a small little story here. I mean, it's four issues long, not no, not a great big thing by any standard of measurement, you know, but it is pretty cool in terms of how it unfolds. But uh, but yeah, guys, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and bring this video to an end. If you guys are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and yeah, <laughs> I will catch you all later. Peace.